Our next reconstruction is not the sort of crime that makes front page news, but it's greatly distressed and upset a lot of elderly people across the home counties and in the Midlands and in the West Country. Over the past three years now, more than 120 people have been persuaded to part with their pension books on their doorsteps by two very plausible bogus social security officials. The pair arrived in Bristol towards the end of last summer. Saturday the 30th of August, the public library in the St George area of Bristol. Hello. I wonder if you can help me. Yes, I'd like to look at your voting lists, please. Yes. Which one do you want? I was thinking of the area down towards this way. To the librarian, there was nothing suspicious about the young woman. Voting lists are often asked for by market researchers and mail order companies. They show the names of householders street by street. straight from that. Yeah. But after she left, librarians found several pages had been torn out. Is it just one page? Sure. No. No, it's more than two. The next Monday, September the 1st, less than a mile from the library is Bruce Road. At nine o'clock, a middle-aged woman called at a house there. Good morning, Mrs. Green. I'm from your social service office. Uh, it's about your pension. Uh -huh. It appears you're going to get a little bit extra. Oh, that's really nice. Yes, it's on the heating allowance. But I'll yes. need your book. Oh, would you like to come in? Uh, no, I, w I won't come in. As a matter of fact, my children have got the flu and I wouldn't like to pass any germs oh. on to you. Thanks very much. I'll take this down to the office. You should get it back tomorrow, but anyhow, Wednesday at the latest. All right. Yes. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Twenty minutes later, a few streets away. Good morning, Mrs. Wilson. I'm from the Social Security. It's about your pension. You're going to get a bit extra. Uh, it's on the heating allowance, one pound eleven. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. But I need your book. Must you? Oh, yes, I'm afraid so. I think you'd better come in, then. Uh, no, I won't come in, thank you very much. I'm just getting over a touch of bronchitis. I wouldn't want to give you a germ, would I? Vera Popel in Heath Street was another victim, and there were two more that morning. DHSS investigators now believe the Bristol offences were by two women who'd been operating together for over two years. They started in London. In 1984, there were 48 identical incidents. Then, in 1985, they moved further afield, 26 more as far as Peterborough and Reading. And this year, another 46 cases from Coventry and the Midlands down to the south coast. And now it seems the same two women are trying another, more shocking method. This is Colchester General Hospital in Essex in August. Good morning, Mrs. Adams. Good morning. I'm your social worker. Oh. Yeah. Now, Dr. Elliot asked me to call in and see you to see if there was anything you wanted. Well, um, I could do with a clean nighty and perhaps another vest, if you would. Yes, I shall need your keys. Oh, would you mind passing my purse? Okay. Thank you. Do you know where I live? Yes, I know your house. Thank you. Right. Well, I should be able to get these back to you within a day or two. Will that be all right? Oh, yes. Very well, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you. A few days later, Mrs. Adams was too ill to remember exactly when, the woman was back. Mrs. Adams? Good morning. Oh. Uh, How are you today? Oh. Not too good. <laughs> well, I bought your clothes for you. Oh, thank you. And a little bit of good news. You're going to get a little extra on your heating allowance. So your pension will go up. If you could let me have your pension book, I'll take it and get it adjusted. Thank you. Now, don't lose it. No, I won't. Uh, you should get this back in about three days' time. Oh. Is that all right? Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, it is one other little thing. It's my daughter's birthday soon. 
do you think you could post her birthday card in the box outside? Of course, dear. Oh, there we are. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. The card never arrived. There have been similar incidents in other hospitals in the south of England. And these are the places where the stolen pension books have been cashed, usually in sub-post offices well away from where they were taken and several weeks later. Generally, it's the younger woman who picks up the money. Hello. Hello. I've got my grandmother's pension book here. Yeah. She's come to stay with me and she hasn't been well, poor thing, so she's not been able to get out. Mm -hmm. um, I've signed the back of the pension book. Yes. Because there's six weeks' money there. You have to fill up their form. Yeah, the change of address form. Yes, yes, I've got that here. Right. That's 200. All right. Then 20, 40. 240. Thank you very Thank much. You. To date, the women have walked away with over £20,000. Well, Detective Sergeant Don Bond, all the pensioners have eventually got their money back from the DHSS, haven't they? Yes, no one's actually lost any money. But of course, they've all been through quite a, a traumatic um, experience. They've grown up in an age when they trust people, and they now find that um, people aren't that tr trustworthy. Um, they've been quite shocked by it all. Yes. When the keys to Mrs. Adams' house were taken when she was in hospital, nothing was taken, I gather, from her house. Oh, no, that's rather strange, that. They seem to have concentrated just on the pension book aspect. They took nothing at all from the house when they had opportunity to. Right, so all they're interested in is the pension books. Mm -hmm. Can we have their descriptions, the older woman, first of all? Yes, she's um, 40 to 55 years of age. She's described by a couple of the old ladies as having um, rather prominent teeth, um, often described as having a pale complexion, and on occasion has been described as a Marjorie Proops look-alike. We have to bear in mind that they wear a number of different disguises and wigs, so it's slightly confusing. Yes. What about the younger woman? Yes, now she's um, generally described as mid-twenties, 22 to 28 years of age. She's uh, 5 foot 3 to 5 foot 5 inches tall, uh, fair hair and slim build. Now, I gather you've just heard that an electoral roll has been stolen from a library somewhere in the Bradford-on-Avon area. Yes, that's right, in Wiltshire. In the last day or two, they've found that their electoral roll has disappeared completely from the library. It may be connected, it may be not, but it would certainly be worth people in Wiltshire being just a little bit more cautious. What are your main points of appeal to viewers? I think threefold. Uh, firstly, to um, librarians, to pay particular attention to people asking to see the electoral roll. Then to the uh, post office staff to be, again, just a little bit more cautious with people who are saying that they've got elderly relatives staying with them temporarily and can they cash their pensions for five or six weeks. And then thirdly to the um, elderly ladies themselves. Just uh, because someone knows your name, it doesn't necessarily mean they're authentic. You should always ask for an identification card. And then all three of those categories uh, may well have seen a vehicle. Uh, it's important that um, we get whatever information we can on any vehicle. There's been no sightings as yet. A car number would be very useful, yes. right. And remember, just because somebody comes to your door and knows your name, it doesn't mean to say you can trust them. Do always ask for identity. If you recognise either of those two women, remember they have a number of different disguises, please ring police here in the studio on 01811 8055, or you can ring the special number set up by the DHSS for this case, and that is 01403 2880. 01403 Out the southwest, he calls himself Peter Davis or John Carr, and over the past year he's been obtaining credit from chain stores by using a false AA membership card as proof of identity. To date, he's committed some 25 offences, amounting to about £54,000 in all, and in towns as far apart as Penzance and Bristol. As Peter Davis, he gives either a home address in Burris near Helston in Cornwall or that of a false company, Alpha Electronics in Exeter. As John Carr, he gives an address in Torpoint, Cornwall. If you recognise him, please get in touch. The number to call is 01811 people's houses and commit an easy burglary. Thousands of this type of case are reported every year. But the thieves in this case, I'm going to about to show you, posed as waterboard officials and they've been operating in South Wales around the Cardiff area. They choose easy targets, vulnerable elderly people who live on their own. In our reconstruction, our victims are played by actresses and we've changed the names to protect their identities. The first two live in the Whitchurch area of Cardiff.
It's four o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday the 26th of September. 84-year-old Gwyneth Maxwell was returning home after a holiday in Torquay. Well, there's nothing been happening here much. No. The weather's been so cold. 20 minutes after she got home, a neighbour called round for a cup of tea. They kept fine for us. Oh, I'm so pleased. <laughs> because you needed a break. Yes? I'm sorry to trouble you, but there's a burst water pipe just up the road. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. Well, the thing is, I've been told to come and check the water, to make sure it's not contaminated. There's nothing wrong with the water. Well, I've got to check it. Well, it seems all right, but I'd better check the water in the kitchen. Well, I'll just check the taps. The pot is fine. I'll be on the way now. Both women thought the man's behaviour very suspicious, and they watched to see where he went. But it wasn't until there was a similar incident, 19 days later, that they reported the matter to the police. Just a few doors away, on Thursday the 15th of October, at about half past two, 79-year-old Avril Jones was taking her rubbish out. 20 minutes later, she received a visit from someone who said the water pipes in the road were faulty. Can you press down on the cold water tap as firmly as possible? Hmm? Yes. Whilst I go upstairs and check the bathroom. Here, use this glass. All right. Now, you'll hear some bumping and banging, but eventually the water will come out muddy. Oh, no, dear. Who's he? Oh, it's all right. He's with me. Now, what time does your husband get home? Well, I can't say. But if it's anything to do with the pipes, uh, you put a note through the letter. I'll do that. <sighs> Realising she'd been conned, she phoned the water board. Too late. But she was lucky. The men found nothing of value and had left empty-handed. But like many old people, Mrs. Jones was too shaken to give police a good description of the bogus officials. However, house-to-house -house inquiries revealed the visit of 19 days earlier, and Gwyneth Maxwell was able to help police build an identical picture of the man who'd called on her. How's that? Absolutely. Eight days later, October the 23rd, in the Cattays district of Cardiff. At about half past one, 86-year-old Louise Thomas was returning home from the post office. She, like all the victims, lives on her own. I'm sorry to disturb you, but there's been a gas explosion, and I've come to check your water. Oh, well, uh... Kitchen this way? Yes. All right. I've just got to check the purity. Can I have a glass of your water, please? Oh, yes, all right. You are. 
Looks all right. Better test it. It's okay. Nothing to worry about. Do you live here on your own? Yes. I'm from a family of 15 or so, so I'm used to a large family. You're a Cardiff girl, Ian. Yes. I lived here all my life. Hmm. That's fine. Nothing to worry about. Oh. I'll be on my way now. Good. In just a few minutes, the burglars had got away with more than three thousand pounds. But it was two hours before Miss Thomas realised what had happened, that her savings were gone. Fifteen miles north of Cardiff, on the A470, is the expressway service station. On the afternoon that burglary happened, witnesses remember that this car broke down there and was abandoned by three men. A routine police inspection a few days later revealed the missing handbag. Documents belonging to Miss Thomas were still inside, but the money, of course, was missing. Well, Detective Chief Inspector Alan Buck is investigating the case, and just about an hour ago, you had another report of a very similar incident, didn't you? Yes, at 3.30 this afternoon, an incident, a similar incident occurred in Kidwelly in the Dovith Powers Police area, when £1,500 was stolen from an elderly couple. So you think it could be the same people? They could well be the same people, yes. Right. Perhaps we could have a closer look at the identikit picture that we saw Gwyneth Maxwell helping you with. The description yes. is of a, a man in his early 20s, about 5 foot 9 tall. He spoke with a polite voice and an Irish accent, and he had very neat, fair hair. And the Irish accent is consistent to all the witnesses' descriptions, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Now, while we were actually filming our reconstruction at the service station, several more witnesses came forward. They did indeed. They had seen three men. Uh, again, these three spoke with Irish accents, in fact, spoke in Gaelic, leaving the scene. Right. Now, the biggest and best clue, of course, is the car, the white Ford Granada. And that was bought on Wednesday, the 21st of October. Here's the receipt from it, at an auction in West Bromwich. That's right. It was bought in West Bromwich, and the person buying it gave a Wolverhampton address. What we'd like to know is where the vehicle was from the 21st to the 23rd. Uh, we'd like to know uh, if anybody saw the people abandoning the car on the A470. Did anyone give them a lift? Where did they stay overnight on the Friday, Saturday? Uh, they certainly came back on the Saturday evening. Did anyone give them a lift back there? We need to know where those men were. Right. Now, one clue was left inside the car. It's rather interesting. Some acne cream. Yes, that acne cream was found on the back seat of the car, and it was bought from a chemist in Blackpool. So there may be a Blackpool connection there. Indeed, there may. Right. Now, these men, of course, might well have visited other people, either in the Cardiff area or even a wider area, and not been successful. We think that's almost certain, and uh, we would ask the public in Cardiff particularly, to phone the local police station if they've had a visit from water board officials in the last few months where they've been in any way suspicious. Right, well for the moment thank you very much indeed. And do call if you can help. The number is, as usual, 01 811 8055 or you can call the Cardiff Police Direct on 0 398 381. You might have important information about a series of frauds in Great Yarmouth, Manchester, Somerset and Merseyside. Last June, this house in Yarmouth was rented by three men, calling themselves Ronald Silverman, David Silverman and Philip Parry. Using their landlord's name, they opened bank accounts, made false credit agreements and opened a sportswear business. In November, they vanished, having fraudulently obtained over £150,000 worth of goods. Their debts in other parts of the country total more than a quarter of a million pounds. When Norfolk Police searched the house, they found this video cassette. What was recorded on it was very interesting. These are shots of the premises that the sportswear business was run from. These are shots of Great Yarmouth. But listen to the voices of the men in the car. I'll go round here and go back up to there. Well, it's outdoor, really, isn't it? 
The Manchester accent belongs to this man. He's six foot two inches tall. He calls himself David John Silverman. This part of the video was shot at the BBC's Antiques Roadshow in June last year. The man with the briefcase claims to be Ronald Silverman, David's stepson. He has a Liverpool accent, is five foot nine inches tall, and may well have a common law wife and a very young child. The third man, known as Philip Parry, doesn't feature on the video, but was photographed at an exhibition by a local paper. He's five foot eight inches tall with no discernible accent. Now back to the subject of antiques. Have you seen one of these recently? It's a copper diver's helmet, and a similar one was taken from the Dolphin Pub on the Fish Wharf at Great Yarmouth. The theft is believed to be connected with the frauds. You're less and less likely to be the victim of a crime. That's the opposite to what many older people fear, of course. Nonetheless, senior citizens need to be aware that some people will try to take advantage of them, and the rest of the community needs to be aware too. If you're a postman, a milkman, or perhaps a neighbour to someone who you think might be vulnerable, you'll see from our next film how we can all prevent these crimes by simply being alert. Helen Phillips takes up the story of one con man and one form of con that's been spreading across the country for 25 years. The winter of 1963 saw the worst storms in living memory. Many homes were wrecked. But as a result, there weren't enough workmen to repair the damage. A new type of criminal appeared on the streets. The bogus property repair men, or prop men as they were called. They actually started their tricks here in Leeds. And it gradually became known as the Leeds crime. Today the problem's worse than ever. And it's still centred around Leeds. One con man in particular has been active in eight different force areas. And last month, a conference was organised here in Leeds specifically to discuss his crimes. The man's believed to have committed up to 80 offences over a wide area. In the last year, he's stolen more than £50,000. Police have produced this photo fit of him. He's in his 40s and well built. Some people say he looks like Jeff Cates. The crimes he's committed are callous and calculated, designed to prey on the elderly and infirm, people least able to defend themselves, or give detailed statements. Nick, how does he go about it? He favours the old person's type of complex. And he's got a very well rehearsed story. He's obviously looking for legitimate vans in the area. That's the type of complex there. And that's the type of van. And he always uses the same method. Oh, we're at Blasted Bully Way. I'll be down shortly. Hello. Hello, is this number 42? Yes. You Mr Young? Yes, I am. I'm the heating engineer. Come to check if you need any new plugs oh, and fittings. Right, can we come in for a minute? Come in. Right, thank you. Right, now let that run for five minutes and turn it off when the water turns brown. You know that, right? Well, you'll have to run it because the boiler will blow up if you don't turn it off when the water turns no, brown. First time I've ever heard don't like that. Right, now you stay here and watch that until it turns brown yeah. and I'll just go and check if everything's all right. It must have slipped back then and into the bedroom. That's when I think it happened. I've had to cope with it. It got me down, I tell you. It got me down. It got me very depressed. And I start, I started to pick myself up. Well, my youngest daughter, she got me pick, pick myself up when she comes. And you don't get like that, Dad. The man starts early and may stay overnight in guest houses. Here's an example of a typical day. Hello. Hello. He committed his first offence in Normanton and then moved on to Sandal near Wakefield. Hello, I'm from the electricity board. I've come to check your immersion heater. Oh, come on in. 
By mid-morning, he was probably in Huddersfield, where he struck twice. Hello, love. Hello. I'm from the water board. We're working in the area. Did you get the letter? No. He stole cash and gold rings, and then went on to Sowerby Bridge. But in Halifax, something went wrong. All right, you sit down there, love. That's it. Okay. Who are you? Oh, hello. Uh, I've been next door fixing a new switch, and I just popped in to check if it's causing any interference. What tale are you telling me? Well, it's all right. She's seen me identification. Haven't you, love? I'll be off to check next door, then. Bye. The lady's son got a good look at his face. He committed eight crimes that day, covering the breadth of Yorkshire. He may have an accomplice who's between 30 and 40 years old, over six foot and well built. In Derbyshire, the conman's been seen getting out of a dark coloured car. Inside was a woman described as plump with fair hair. But the witness in Halifax was able to give the police a very good description of the man. For the first time on Crime Watch, we're going to try and develop it using a new home office system called eFit. It supersedes a photo fit and creates a computerised image very similar to our video fit. The system also allows for any alterations which the witness may want to make by actually changing the features on the screen. Michael, is that a good likeness? Well, the beard needs filling on both cheeks. Uh, that left eyebrow, could, could, could that be brought round slightly? Well, I'd like to see it filled in up here and, and across there. This provides us now with a very clear image of the man we're looking for. Have a good look at him again. If you recognise him, or if you have any information about this or similar cases, call us now on 01 811 8055. Or you can ring the instant room direct on Leeds 414141. Track down this cheerful amateur filmmaker. Perhaps the reason he's looking so pleased with himself is because he's just hired a video camera which he will fail to return. This is not the only time he's obtained expensive professional equipment in this way. Pro Polaroid photos of the same person in the same suit have been taken in video hire shops in North Wales, Merseyside and Cheshire during September and October this year. These are taken as part of the hire agreement. Using stolen checkbooks and driving licenses as proof of identity, he's borrowed and not returned £10,000 worth of video cameras and accessories. He's in his mid-twenties, five foot nine to six foot and of slim build. So if you recognise him or any of our other photo call faces, please ring us now. Investors when he set up in the business as a financial consultant. His company, Link Financial Services, started in the early 80s, but last December, when customers tried to contact him, it seems he'd disappeared. Inquiries so far have revealed that nearly a quarter of a million pounds of investors' money has gone missing. He may still be driving this white Alpha Sud car, registration number HBC 571V. He was last seen on the 28th of December in Worcester. Alan John Joyner is 45, 5 foot 11 with a broad build. If you have seen him or know where the car is now, please let us know. I believe he may have information about an employment agency which offered construction work abroad. Calling itself Orion Associates and operating from an address in Wembley, Middlesex, the company advertised jobs in the national press. Since July, several hundred people have replied to the ads and sent in a £15 registration fee. They've heard nothing since. On July the 15th, this man was caught on the security camera at the Halifax Building Society in Edgware, North London. He obtained cash from an account believed to be holding the proceeds of the job advertisements. He's in his 30s, about six foot and well built with mid-brown hair. If you do know who he is, or can help with any of our other photo call faces, please ring us to... John and Robin McAllister. We believe they may be able to help with inquiries into a series of mortgage frauds in the South East. Since 1989, thefts of large sums of money have taken place in Hertfordshire. Mr and Mrs McAllister were last seen in Chorley Wood in Hertfordshire in March 1992, when they said they were moving to Wiltshire.
If you know where they are now or can help with any of our photocall cases, please. Squad would like to speak to Stephen Edward Burrow. Between 1991 and 1993, five building firms in Liverpool made false insurance claims totaling over £100,000. Stephen Burrow is in his 30s, 5 foot 8, has a neat appearance and wears John Lennon style gold rimmed circular glasses. You may know him by another name, so if you can help, please call. He'd been posing as a police officer and targeting elderly people to steal their savings. Well, now we need to catch another man doing the same thing, again, preying on the vulnerable. This time, there's a pretty big police operation because he's caused misery for a large number of people in Newport, in South Wales. He's tried it on at least 25 times over the last three years, and all his victims have been aged over 70. The start of his pattern of offences was in March 1995 in the Cullian Road area of Newport. Then onto either side of the river Usk, first aiming at bungalows and then onto nearby terraced houses. How does he travel? Does he have a car? He appears well dressed and his manner is polite. Is he a local man with no commitments? Is he self-employed or unemployed? He's often free during the week and at different times of the day. In the reconstruction which follows, details from several cases have been amalgamated to reveal as much about him as we can and to hide the identity of his victims. I keep up with my bills and never owe anything. So I used to keep the £20 notes that I had with my pension on one side and pay the big bills like the council rates and, and all that out of it. Yes? Is it Roberts? Yes. What do you want? It's the police. Have you any ID? Can I come in? You better sit down. I can't stay long. I tell you what it is, Mrs. Roberts. There's been a lot of forged notes going around this area recently. Have you any 20 pound notes? Yes. Could I see one, please? Yes, I keep my notes here. Thank you. Oh dear, I thought so. That can't be a fake. Do you have any more? Yes. Can I see them? Here you are. I tell you what, you couldn't get me a damp cloth, could you? So I can test them? Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Roberts. Well, I suppose so. When I came back from the kitchen, he was gone and I couldn't see sign of him anywhere. He left the doors open and just went. Hello? I started shaking all over, panicked, you know, and I thought, I wonder if he'll come back. I knew he wouldn't. Couldn't wait for the police to get there. It's after that it's all over that you begin to think, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that. But you don't think of it, do you? Especially when he said he was from the police. Well, one of the first attacks that he carried out was on a, on a very elderly lady. She was 92 years of age. Um, and uh, we are absolutely positive that he followed her from a post office. Um, and she has never, ever returned to the house at all. The thief is probably in his 40s and well built. His face is said to be round. One woman talks of his complexion being very pale. His hair is jet black, though it might be dyed. Some witnesses thought it was a wig. Apart from his generally smart appearance, there's nothing consistent about his clothing. He seems to have several homemade versions of an ID card. Do you recognize this man? Or have you been approached by him and not reported it? Maybe the amount he stole was trivial. Maybe you were just too upset to tell anyone. And there have been several times when he's tried to rob people and didn't get away with it. In fact, now we'll show how important it is to check, at least with someone, if you're worried or in doubt. My mother, she's an unbeliever. She don't really believe what people say. Especially when it comes to money as well. I'm from the police. Oh, you better come in. through here. 
You only got to mention the police and the old people and the others. I believe you've been paying some bells with forged notes, love. I don't think so. Listen, can I have a look at your money? What for? Well, you might have some forged bills, see, without knowing it. Oh, I'm sure I haven't. Well, let me have a look anyway. I think I'm going to phone my daughter. Now, there's no need for that. I'll just go and check with my colleague in the car. I am going to phone my daughter. That day, I think I would have ran him over if I saw him coming out of the house, because I was that angry. Because it was my mother, and that like, people won't want to live on their own because of the fear of people coming into the house. He's been committing these offences for nearly three years, and he's caused such a lot of distress that the police have at times had over 30 officers on the case. Now, please, think carefully. The man knows Newport very well, and he has a local accent. Who do you know Do you know who's well-built, with a pale complexion, jet black hair, perhaps a jet black wig? The first offence was in March 1995. The second was in August 1996. Now, that's a gap of 18 months. Where was he during that time? If you know, well, you can do the community a lot of good. 0500 600 600 or call the local police on 01 245 3 Ever crime watch programs some I think it was 14 years ago we covered a terrible crime in which a man posed as a gas board official and murdered a shopkeeper who'd led him into his kitchen we now have what may be somewhat similar crime this time a man posing as a water company official it happened in Bethnal Green in East London on a Friday afternoon four weeks ago the victim was Mary Lazenby her family are all keen that this appeal should go ahead, but they're so distressed they couldn't themselves take part. So Mary's carer guides us through what happened. Her life was her cats. She loved her cats. I used to say to her, Mary, have your dinner. And she'd make sure the cat had her dinner first. <laughs> Chico! Chico! I've been going to see Mary on and off for about ten years. And I used to take her dinner every day. Come on, then. She mainly just stayed in her flat. She might put the telly on sometimes. But she was mainly with her cat. Sure. Deep down, you do have your little favourites. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. You know, and Mary was one of them. Mary had her own flat at the end of this corridor in Rochester Court, housing for the elderly. It may be sheer coincidence, but a neighbour, Sophie, had an unexpected visitor on Friday afternoon, the 21st of May. He had no right to be in the building, and certainly no right to be inside Sophie's flat. Oh, are you? Hello there, I'm just from the water board here to see about your water. Do you have a bowl or anything like that I can borrow? There's nothing wrong with my water. Let me see your identity card. Yeah, of course, there you go. OK. Tell you what, should we go and see the warden? She knows me, she'll vouch for me. Go doubt. OK. Later on, Sophie found her purse was missing. Soon afterwards, two men were seen sitting on a wall in Wilmot Street, outside Rochester Court. Who were they? And was this their van? Then, half an hour later, the son of some residents answered the intercom. Uh, sorry, I've uh, got the wrong flat. OK. Who was trying to get into the building around 5pm that Friday? Was this you, innocently going to the wrong flat? Or was it the man who'd stolen Sophie's purse? Then, an hour later, at Mary's end of the corridor. Here we are, ladies. Come on, then. Off we come. Lovely. Yeah, I, I thought we could have... As we came out of the lift, we saw a man at Mary Lazenby's door. Hello, Mary. Are you all right? Are we going to try that dress on? I assumed he was visiting. He was very casual and he just walked in and out of sight. I've got a lump in my throat. Every time I talk about it, I feel sick. 
you know, because she, she would have let anybody in. She would have believed anything anybody would have told her. But to do what they did to her is just unbelievable. Half an hour later, Mary was heard talking to someone in her flat. What are you doing that to me for? Even then, I just thought it was a relative or a visitor of some kind that she knew. She wasn't shouting, she didn't sound frightened. We can go down. As we went in the lift, I heard Mary's front door open and close quite quickly. Now I think that maybe it was her opening the front door and maybe him shutting it. Maybe she was trying to get out. And I wish I'd gone back up to have a listen outside the door or even from the lift, I might have heard something. Okay, dear, I'm all done. I'll see you next week, all right? You take care. All right. When I left my clients, I was walking towards Mary's door. A young fella came out of the door. You were going in this flat? Oh, no. He didn't appear nervous at all. He was 17 to 18 years old, medium height, had short blonde hair, a thin face with a chipped tooth, and was smart and clean. Mary's body was discovered in her living room the next morning. She'd been punched and kicked so hard that her jaw, her ribs and her spine were broken. I just remember the lady I used to go to every single day for years. Warm, lovely, simple lady. And I just, I'll just remember smiling, to, smiling at me at the door. Make whoever killed her seems to have completely lost it, lost control. Yeah, Mary's injuries were absolutely horrendous. Her jaw, her sternum, every rib in her body was broken. Her spine was actually snapped and her heart and her liver both exploded as a result of the force used on her. She was a, a small, frail lady with a disability. She was, yes. It seems inconceivable that whoever did this could have, could have done this as a first offence. I wouldn't have thought so. I would have thought there was probably a string of minor offences that have led up to this. Uh, did he do this on his own, or do you think there were two people involved, or perhaps more? There was certainly, he was in on the flat, in the flat on his own. I would think that there was a possibility that there was another man outside the flat somewhere, maybe in the street outside, or outside the confines of the flat itself. How seriously in trouble is that accomplice? Well, I can't believe that two people went out that day intent on committing this horrendous crime. I would think that probably one of them doesn't know what his accomplice has done. If he was outside and he went out with a view of committing what he thought was a minor crime, a theft of some description, and now he knows what's actually happened within, if he comes forward and speaks to us, tells us who the other person is, I can assure him I will deal with him for the minor offence of theft providing he's got nothing to do with this offence of murder at all. And if he doesn't come forward, is he in much bigger trouble? Of course he is, yeah, because that just shows that he may have some sort of knowledge, or he may have been part of it. Now this effort of the, we've got from the witness who saw the man coming out of the flat, you're fairly confident of that. Tell, tell us what you know about this man's description. The effort is very good. The man is about 18 years old, he's 5 foot 10, he's got an angular face, pointed features, quite slim build, He's described as quite good looking with short cropped hair but there's, he's got half a tooth missing on the left hand upper part of his mouth and his smile is actually ruins his good looks apparently because there's a buckle in the rest of his teeth. Now this is terrifying to, to people this sort of attack, particularly to elderly people. You were telling me earlier uh, older people shouldn't be worried about this sort of thing, it's very very rare indeed. It, it is very rare Nick, yeah. older people shouldn't be worried at all because statistics show that younger people are more prone to be victims of violent attacks. And as I said before, there's absolutely no need for this sort of violence to be used on this type of person. Well, this is a horrible crime, though. There may be something, anything that you can contribute. If there is, please, 0500 600 600, that call costs you nothing. Or you can ring detectives in the incident room on 0171 790 1212. This is a man to be aware of, especially if you're a sportsman. Not only does he claim to be a professional golfer, but also a police officer and a lottery winner. And he's even claimed to be a sufferer of terminal cancer. He's wanted in connection with several frauds. Have you ever lent him money or given him personal financial details? He's Thomas Mansford Stewart. He's mid-thirties, blue eyes, slim, five foot ten and comes from Kent. If you know anything about him, do please let us know on 0500 600 600 or 01245 212 511. It has become a risky business. The card companies have been getting serious about tackling it and so have the stores.
take a look at this from HMV in Cambridge. This man has good reason to look nervous while his credit card is checked. Who is he? Certainly not the authorised owner of the card. He's in his early 30s or 40s, about 5 foot 6, and this is just one of several stores in which he tries a scam. If you know who he is, and someone must, 0500 600 600 or 01223 358 96. Cumbria, near the Lake District, is one of those places where people, well, they look after each other. It's a really friendly community. But a stranger has been abusing that trust. You may recognise the face, or you may recognise the habits. It's mostly on a Wednesday or Thursday around lunchtime. His victims are always elderly and often poor. And maybe he has an accomplice. The ring came at the door, and uh, it was this chap like. You're all right, look. I've got a, a delivery for next door. Do you know if they're in? So he said, well, I want to deliver some cement. Do you think I could come through? So he came through with me, and he must have left the front door open off the catch. While she was distracted, someone got upstairs. I was going to treat myself to some new clothes, for one thing, because I've never had a lot in life, not in that line. Couldn't believe my eyes. It'd been into practically everything. My rings had gone out of my drawer. They had very sentimental value, because one was my engagement ring, and I thought the world of that, of course. I run upstairs and shut the window, my bedroom window, and I was coming out, and there was this fella laying across my bed like that. I said, I said, what do you think you're doing? He said, I'm looking for a plug. I said, what do you want a plug for? I never ordered a plug. I said, get out. He went. I followed him down. But after that, I don't know where he went. She then discovered he'd taken her savings, a hundred pounds. Take another look at him. Sometimes he wears glasses and a blue military-style jumper, and he may have had a boil on his neck. It's possible 50 elderly people have been robbed by him on Wednesdays and Thursdays, remember, in Barrow, 0500 600 600. It's a lot of money, and it takes a hell of a lot of getting together. I, I think they're stinkers, whoever they are. Says here, all of us, uh, we think there are a lot of these offences, of course, all of them causing such, such grief, do cause. Let me tell you the number again 0500 600 600, or the incident room, which is 01229 848 880. Trouble is one of the most despicable crimes. We need to find this man who befriended a disabled gentleman who was on holiday in Torquay last summer. Have a listen to his voice taken from a different home video. Turn on again. And again, turn around again. It's quite good. You can't see really pick up that it's got holes in it. You can't see through this one. He returned home with the party to Ramsgate and whilst pretending to care for one of them, stole his car and all his savings. Now he uses the names Mark Watson, Wilshire or Reynolds, but where is he tonight? The incident room is on 01843 222 148. That's Thanet, treble two one four eight.